Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. I'm Pastor Marty Leto. Welcome to our Savior's Lutheran Church. We're having a service of the word this morning in this digital fashion, and we're glad that you're with us. I hope that the word affixes itself to your heart and helps bring you joy and healing this week. Um, today is Transfiguration Sunday. We will celebrate that very unique part of the gospel story where Jesus uh, is called up to the mountain, takes a couple of his disciples with him, and is literally transfigured in front of their eyes. And then they begin to see um, Jesus in a new way, and you see the ministry begin to shift after that as well. Um, Caleb has some amazing music for us today. We've got some digital readers that are with us today, so lots of faces, lots of fun. Um, I hope that this service is a blessing to you and welcome. Uh, as we come as we are uh, and experience this thing, I hope that the word gets a chance to to connect with you today. Blessings. We begin our service this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. The good news, how vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to the beloved community living out Christ Jesus in the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Now let's sing our gathering song, Arise, Your Light is Come. Arise, Your Light. Oh 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illuminate the world with your image. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For a children's sermon today, I wanted to take a moment and talk to you about Wednesday night, uh, the 17th of February at seven o'clock, we're going to do a live Zoom worship service to do our Ash Wednesday service. Now, for many of you, um, that's a service that you may not have been to for a long time because we haven't had a lot, a lot of people at our, at our Ash Wednesday service. But what that service is, is it's a time where we take Theoretically, we take the palms from last Palm Sunday and we and I burn them or the altar guild burns them down. It's sort of a prayerful time. You burn just a few of them down and then put a little bit of oil in them. And then people come forward for our Ash Wednesday service. And I put the, the black um, ashes on their foreheads and we receive the words from dust. You have come to dust. You will return. 
And it's a penitent time. It's a time of contemplation and prayer, recognizing the beginning of Lent. And so then historically, of course, Ash Wednesday is a day where Christians then go out into the world with that on their forehead, sort of marking the beginning of their fast, which will happen in secret and private uh, after that experience. Well, this year we're not gonna be able to be together and I'm not gonna be able to put ashes on people's foreheads. So I've really been trying to rack my brain about how to do an Ash Wednesday service that's meaningful. And so I've got a couple of ideas and some of them have come from our Bible studies and some of them I've just come up with on my own. But when we do our Ash Wednesday service on uh, Wednesday night, there's a whole bunch of prayers that happen before we do the ashes. And it's a bunch of con uh, confession and contemplation, as I said. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to participate in Ash Wednesday at home. And one of the things you can do if you want to is you can find something, um, an old leaf, or you can go out and find maybe some pine leaves or something like that, uh, leaf from your yard, and you can put them in a, in a coffee can outside of your house maybe and, and burn a few of them if you want to, put some oil in it, make that little mixture. And then at that time, you can put them on your, on your own forehead if you want to, to do that. Um, another way that I'm thinking about this and this came from our Bible study, is what if we write on a piece of paper some of the things that we'd like to be thankful for or, or penitent for or sorry for or some things we might like to shake over the next um, 40 days going into Lent. And then we might burn those as well. That's another thing that you could prepare your ashes for. And we might even take some time during the service uh, to do that if it's necessary, although I'm not going to I'm not going to ask everyone to light a fire in their home during that time. So, um, but you'll have a chance to do it if you want to. And then the other one is to come, which is more simple and maybe more meaningful because even if we put the ashes on our forehead, we're not actually going to probably go out to see very many people. And so it's not um, maybe that, uh, that much of a symbol this year anyway. But what if the third idea that I have is what if you bring a, a piece of white paper and a pencil or some dark markers or something and while we're in our prayers you build your own sign uh just across and then um, we put that on our windows outside of our homes for a time as a symbol it, it's however we want to do it but this year we're interpreting our symbols in a different way we've had to because of the virus and the response to the pandemic but we didn't have to do this last year ash wednesday i still had a chance to put ashes on people's foreheads. So this is one of the last rituals that I haven't had to make up and figure out how to do. And it's actually one of the hardest. So bear with me, but please join us for this service on Wednesday night. It's a live service of communion and it will have this strange thing happening in the middle of it. And so I just, uh, I lift that up. But as I close this time, I'd just like to say a prayer for our kids who have been going through so much. And I just like to pray for them at this time, if you would please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the symbols and ways uh, that we learn and cope with the changing of the seasons and process our lives. Especially today, I want to lift up a blessing and a prayer for all of our kids in our congregation and the kids in our community who have gone through so much. Lord, I ask that you would just give them an extra, another extra dose of patience and healing and love and mercy. Um, I also ask that you give parents and teachers and all those who are supporting kids an extra measure of that same mercy and, and humor and love. Um, bless us as we look forward to the days where we can potentially get back to normal, but continue to be with us while we endure this time. Shape us, change us, and grow us in ways that uh, you need us to grow for the ministry of your gospel, for the living of our lives as, as your children, um, and bless us in this time as we go through the changing of seasons once again. Uh, be with us in this time of Lent and transition, um, and thank you for each day that we get together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first reading from the day is from Second Kings chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. 
Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, and they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elijah, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you've asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha cried kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 50, 1 through 6. The mighty one God the Lord has spoken, calling the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God shines forth in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence with a consuming flame before and round about a raging storm. God calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of the people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. The heavens declare the rightness of God's cause, for it is God who is judge. The second reading is 2 Corinthians 4, 3 through 6. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbeliever to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, beginning in chapter 9, verse 2 through 9. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Peter then said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. 
This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you, the church, wherever you are, whenever you see this, however you are when you see this. Blessings to you. Today's Gospel is a picture of transfiguration, of change. And if there has ever been a year or a time where the reality of change has been with us so ever present, it has been this year. And so as we encounter this text again this time around, I think it's worth recognizing the power of this transfiguration story. First of all, it's a short story and it's a story of Jesus and three of his disciples whom he chooses to come up to this mountaintop. And then he begins to, he's changed. He's transfigured, not transformed, not transmitted. He's transfigured and light begins to shine out of him. And a veil is un, unwoven. Uh, so the disciples all of a sudden see two dead guys standing with Jesus. These or not currently living guys standing with Jesus. You got Moses on one side and Elijah on the other. Well, both of those men from Bible stories didn't die. They went on to live with God. With Moses, we just never see what happens to him. He goes off and disappears, dies, goes with God. We don't know. But with Elijah, we literally watched him through the text earlier, go to heaven in a chariot. And so for Jesus to be with these two, talking to these two heavy hitters, it's also important to recognize who these people were. Moses brought the law. Moses gave the picture of the way of God in this world, how to live, how to make decisions. And then we have Elijah, who was the prophet, who spoke of the God who would return and come and make things right with people and, ha and giving us hope. He was the beginning of that prophet prophetic word. And so with Jesus standing on that mountaintop, as he's filled with light pouring out of him, pouring out of him, you've got the law and you've got the gospel. You've got the recognition of what needs to occur, how things ought to be, and the possibility of new life. And so as Peter sees this, he makes the right choice for his time and place. He doesn't know what else to say, it says, and I think it's true, because as a, as a, good, um, as a good study of the rabbi, he would have very, very quickly known that it would have been time to put up a sukkut or, or celebrate sukkut, or, uh, which is a, a booths, the celebration of the booths. And basically booths are you know, pillars of wood with cloth around them, uh, almost like a tent shelter that you can go into and sit in and reside with the holy. It's an ancient practice. It's still practiced today. And as the, the celebration of the booths is a natural reaction to encountering the divine, because it's a place to sit and be where God once was, to reside in the place that God happened to blow through. And so, Peter recognizes this. He's like, this is Elisha and Moses and Jesus. And oh my goodness, this is a, this is something of God. And we should do the thing we know about to celebrate it, to capture it, or to commemorate it in some way. And then the strangest part of the story is then a cloud shows up. <laughs> the cloud speaks to them and said, this is my beloved. Listen to him. which is an interesting thing to say, but it's more of just a continued validation of Jesus being the one that these disciples need to recognize is unique and special. And then when their eyes are opened, it's just Jesus. And we are given the symbol in this, in this picture that in Jesus is both the law and the gospel coming to judge the living and the dead 
but also to provide new life, salvation, rebirth, healing, resurrection to a broken world. The response to this text is it blows the disciples' minds and Jesus tells them, don't tell anybody about this until I'm raised from the dead. And that's because as they come down that mountain, as they have just encountered something that they cannot comprehend, it is as Paul describes in his letter that a veil has been pulled back. It is as Elisha was able to do, see the, you know, he got the double blessing because he was able to see, he had the faith to see, he was able to see Elisha going into heaven. The veil had been pulled back for these disciples in the sense that they saw that Jesus was more and that this reality that we were in was just more than they had ever seen before, that a mystical level of knowing had come to them. And from this point on, Jesus heads directly to the cross. From this point on in the ministry, Jesus goes down this mountaintop experience and goes directly to the cross. You're going to see that happen over the next stretch of this story. Well, how does this apply to us today? I have to tell you a little story about this week. Because how this applies to us today, I'll give you the answer. How this applies to us today is transformation and transfiguration that is happening in our lives. And it happens when we encounter the law and the gospel. And this year, being stuck in our homes, studying our, our beliefs in a different way, has been profound in recognizing the power of the law and the gospel in our time. It is the law that has broken our hearts as we've witnessed um, riots in the streets, as we have witnessed um, riots in our capital, as we have witnessed brokenness in, in racist tactics in our systems, as we have witnessed um, racism in the distribution of medicine. These things uh, eat on us because of the law. It's written in our hearts. It's a gift of God so that we know that right from wrong. We know it. We feel it. It's not something that we have to really talk about. It's just there. And likewise, the Holy Gospel offers the, the, the salve that needs to be there for healing, the opportunity for ret retribution and restorative justice and working through our problems. But it only happens if we encounter the light and bear witness to the light. This week, this is a total nerd story, but I don't care. I was, I was watching the impeachment stuff and I was geeking out on some liturgy things of all things to be reading. I was going through uh, my liturgy documents and, and such notes and stuff that I, and, and websites that I go through um, to plan for Lent, which is that time of year. And I ran across a, a November article you're not going to like this. I'm just telling you all right now. And we're going to talk about this at Bibles at the coffee hour as well. But I found in uh, an article from November 2nd, I think it was, an article about a composer named David Haas. Now, I don't didn't know his name, but I know his music. We are called to be da 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 You know that song. Another one, blessed are they for we are people, blah, da, 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 da. You know that song. There's four of them. I don't know the other two offhand. He is a person who has been found out to be a serial molester, rapist. I just found this in an article. Like I didn't heard about it and hadn't known much about it. Read, as I read, uh, noticed that the Catholic response, because he's a Roman Catholic, the Catholic response has been to eliminate him from all music being used, to stop paying royalties. The Lutheran response, as I found it, which took me a little time, um, was that we are no longer to be using those songs. And I went back and I read through 
our document um, on women and women and sexuality and abuse and all these different things that came out of our 2019 document about that. And it's not enough when we are found, when we find these moments, it's not enough just to um, say, oh, that's too bad. We have to be actively anti-sexist. We have to, we have to protect our women. We have to protect our girls. We have to protect our, our wives, our daughters, our friends. And so as a church, we have to react. And I didn't know this, and I know this is a shock to you. But the reaction is the transformation. The reaction is the transfiguration. The reaction is, is that this isn't the first time this has happened. And we know what truths, uh, or we know what happens when these truths are uncovered. And we know that we have to let our light shine. And so the law applies. Oh my God, this is bad. And the gospel applies. There is forgiveness through reconciliation, through justice, but he's probably going to go to prison for the rest of his life. And he probably deserves that at this point in the laws of this land. But in terms of God, in terms of Jesus, in terms of the church, we have to be proactive in how we respond and react to these situations. We can't just let it go and say, oh, okay, because that's not true forgiveness. That's not true uh, light. That's continuing the abuse every time that song is heard. Every time that song is heard and someone in a congregation who is a victim or a survivor can get whacked again with that ugly feeling. This is what it means to come down and not to have built the booths <laughs> You know, it's one thing to try to have those God moment experiences and you put them in a you put them in a little bubble and you hold on to them forever. And Peter's reaction to say, whoa, this is a divine moment. We should capture some of this essence. It's a good reaction. But Jesus's reaction is all about use. That's Luther's word. How do you use it? How does it how does it apply as you use this piece of theology? Right. That's that's how. That's how his brain worked. And it's how our church works in our process of saying, well, what's the right use? What's the right use of forgiveness at this time? Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his experience, warns us against the, the idea of grace being cheap. Now, grace is free, of course. But without that real confession, without that true opening up, without that true unletting, of the brokenness, how can there be true light? So we won't be using David Haas's music anymore. And that's frustrating and sad, but to react accordingly, to be proactive in our approach of recognizing that this happens and it happened and that we're not gonna deny it and that we'll unfortunately walk through this cross too. Um, it hurts as a worship planner, I'll tell you that, because those were songs we loved. It hurts as a worshiper because those were songs that we loved and used. But maybe it also opens up the opportunity for new composers, for people's new songs to come into those places, for us to build other, um, other musical renditions of things that we love, uh, and God will fill those voids, I have no doubt. And God fills the voids in our heart when we face these uncomfortable, difficult, sinful, broken parts of life and let the light shine in. That is our job. We, at the end of the service today, will be reminded, let your light shine. Oftentimes that doesn't bring happiness and joy. It sometimes brings the fact that you walk into a room and as soon as the light comes on, you see that there are cockroaches all over in the room. It happens. So as light bearers, we shouldn't be surprised when sometimes our light shines on things that are broken. But that's God's business, to bring healing to a broken world. And as partners in God's business, that will be ours as well.
as we turn this corner into Lent and do some of that work of shining light into the dark corners of our own lives, may we be blessed to have courage, confidence, grace, and a connection to the Holy Spirit of God that calls us into this work and into this journey of faith. Blessings to you. May your faith abound. May you have the courage to look into the dark corners of your life and to shine that light, that, that, um, that law light, but also that gospel light to be reminded of healing and potential of new life in your own corners of life. Amen. At this time, let us confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for communities of faith far and near, 
and for all those who show the face of Christ throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For creation, sun, moon, and stars, life forming in the dark, earth, and ocean deep, mountains, clouds, and storms, and creatures seen and unseen, for the Holy Spirit's guidance in our stewardship of God's creation, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For those responsible for safety and protection, for emergency responders and security guards, attorneys and advocates, civil, civil servants and leaders of governments, that they witness to mercy and justice throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all those who suffer this day, that Christ our healer transforms sickness into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For companions on life's journey in this worshiping community, for loved ones who cannot be with us this day, and for guidance during struggles we face, that God's glory is revealed around and among us, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our living, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. As we share the peace, oftentimes I ask you to reach out to a friend and I would ask you to do that again today or a family member or someone who you need to make a connection with and feel called to do so. This is your call uh, to do that. So, so hear that call in your heart. Likewise, there's another way that we can um, share the peace of Christ. And that is a very simple mechanism of subscribing to these ministry podcasts and our worship services and also liking and sharing, grabbing this link and throwing it in an email to an outside friend who has not seen it before. Um, those are also ways we can share the peace. And so I would encourage you to help us spread the reach of this ministry, this online digital ministry. We're growing uh, already, but why not, why not continue that work? And so as we, as we lift up the peace today uh, and consider our offerings, um, please, please add that to the repertoire of how we share the peace. Also, thank you for your giving. Thank you for helping to continue to sustain and keep this ministry alive and kicking and actually growing during these days. Um, we are now going to take a moment where Caleb will play some music and give us a chance to contemplate our giving or give you a chance to take care of that at this time uh, through, through this service. So these are, these are how we live out this expression of being the peace and making an offering to keep things moving forward in this living ministry together. Blessings. Let us pray. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus teaches us how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now let us sing together our sending song. now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody.